What's up, innovators? Today, I had the pleasure of interviewing Mike Kidwell from Leader Bank. He's a senior loan advisor here in Massachusetts, and we started talking about the Mass Dreams Grant, which is a grant program here in Massachusetts that allows up to $50,000 in free money towards your down payment, points, closing costs, buying down your rate, and even PMI. PMI stands for private mortgage insurance. And this is all great cost savings, guys. When rates go up, the banks and the government find ways to incentivize people to buy homes. And this is a great program that you should take advantage of. There are other programs like this throughout the country, not just here in Massachusetts. So if you're thinking about buying anywhere in America, contact me in the link below and I'll be able to assist you with finding the team in your area that can help you take advantage of the programs uh, that are available to you. Hope you find this helpful. Please feel free to like this video to help the algorithm on YouTube promote it so that more people can get this great information. And thanks for your support over the years. Enjoy. Michael, if you want to introduce yourself, where you're from, uh, what you do as a profession, and kind of how you got into the industry. All right. So Michael Kidwell, I'm a senior mortgage advisor with Leader Bank. Uh, I have been in the industry for over 20 years. That's that's all the grays there. That, that does that yeah. to you. 20 years in the mortgage industry. It's the wisdom. Uh, yeah. So uh, Leader Bank, my office is out of Needham, Massachusetts. I work mainly from home. Uh, but, you know, we can lend, Leader lends all over the country. We can lend throughout uh, the entire continental United States. Most of our business, though, is, is, is you know, Boston-centric, uh, Massachusetts for the most part, uh, that sort of thing. So that's that's kind of how, and how I got into it. I sort of fell into it uh, with a, a friend of mine back in the days when there was actually finance companies way back when. And, uh, and that's when you had to write the loans and you had to collect the loans. No one does that anymore. You actually had to collect the payments on them if they didn't pay. So that was always fun. So uh, I've been doing it for a while. I no longer have to collect the loans, which is, is a really nice thing. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. So you, oh, you yeah. had to own it basically. Yeah. If you, if you underwrote it and you, you know, basically agreed to do it, you had to make sure the loan was paid. That, that's exactly right. They used to say you have to, what did they say? You have to eat what you kill or something along those lines. Wow, man. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I'll tell you, Michael, if they had that policy in place prior to 2008, we would have never had the crash. We would not have had the crash, no, because we would have been spending a lot of time collecting loans. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Sounds good, man. Excellent. So one, one thing today I want to talk to you about, Michael, is the grant, uh, the, excuse me, the uh, Dream Mass Dreams grant. You got I, it. I'm tempted to say loan, but it isn't a loan, correct? Correct. It's not a loan. It is a grant. And it ne once you receive the grant, once you close on the home, it never needs to be paid back. So there's no time requirement. You don't have to be in the house for a certain period of time, anything along those lines. So if you, know, if, if you ended up living in the home for a year and decided, hey, I wanted to move up to another home or to a different home or move across the country, you could sell the house and that money does not need to be paid back. Excellent, man. Sounds good. So do you have like a presentation you want to, pre to present? I, I, I had a, I just allowed you to share your screen if you wanted to uh, give us. All right. So if you do that, let me let me find it here. Here we go. And share that. And let me start from the beginning. All right. So do you see that, Robert? I can see it. Leader Bank, awesome. Kidwell, Mortgage yeah. Advisor. Awesome. Okay, so this is just the grant program. Uh, so it's the Mass Dreams grant program. There, by the way, there's two different programs in Massachusetts. One's the Mass Dreams, and that is run by Mass Housing. And then just to make it confusing, because um, a lot of people are also talking about a program through Mass Housing Partnership. I'm not talking about that today. I'm just talking about the Mass Housing program. So th that's why I think there is some confusion though between the two. And quite honestly, they're splitting the grant. So the state received $65 million. This came from COVID. Um, so came from COVID money, I guess, basically to help people uh, that would, they consider disproportionately impacted by COVID um, buy a home. So the, basically the, the way the grant works, they, they have two, two criteria. They have a $35,000 grant and then they have a $50,000 grant. And um, so basically what's the catch? So here's the catch. Um, you have to qualify. You have to be a first-time home buyer. There are income limits, but quite honestly, Robert, the income limits are incredibly high. So, for instance, the $35,000 grant, if you were buying a home in Suffolk, Middlesex, Essex counties, any of those counties, the income limit is just under $180,000. Wow. So, if you That's make less really than one hundred eighty, dollars yeah, it's pretty high, right? Usually, a program like this 
it's great, but they all the income limits are always so low that almost nobody qualifies. This particular program income limits are pretty high. Uh, the, the big catch here is you have to currently live in one of the towns notated in the program, and I'll go over that in just a second. And then okay. lastly, you have to qualify. So you do have to have at least a minimum credit score of 640. So first time home buyer, what is that? That is anybody who has not owned a home in the last three years. Yeah. So I was recently at, a, at an event. I was talking with someone. She goes, I really wish I could take advantage of this, but my, I got, I was in a divorce situation. We had to sell the house. I go, well, how long ago was that? She said, five years ago. I said, you sold your home five years ago. She said, yes. I said, hey, congratulations. You are now a first, new first time home buyer, which Love she did it. not realize that. So that's something to think about. Um, and then here are the income limits. So the 35K grant, which we already talked about, we have over here on the left-hand side, like so Middlesex, Essex, um, Suffolk would fall in there. There's 179,955 for the $35,000 grant. For the $50,000 grant, again, it's an income cap. And so the income cap for that is about 133,000. This is the income on just the borrower, not the household. I think the MHP program's household income this is borrower specific household. So if you had a married couple and let's say both spouses made, I don't know, $120,000 a year, they're making 240 as a, as a, as a household, um, but they could qualify on just one of the spouse's income. That's fine. The other spouse won't go on the loan, won't go on the deed. We'll do the loan on just the one spouse's name and then they could still get the money um, is how that works. So it's Got not it. household income. It's just the person on the loan. Um, and then the custom, the borrower must currently live in one of these towns. So they must either rent or live with family in one of these towns. These are considered disproportionately impacted communities by COVID. And here's a list of the towns themselves. So um, a couple of standouts on this is Boston. Right. Uh, also, Quincy is on there, Malden, places like that. Um, all those qualify. And I think oftentimes that um, when somebody thinks of like a first time home buyer or a grant program, they're thinking really low income. They're thinking, Hey, I, I don't need the money. I already have a down payment, but I, I got to, you know, and I think I mentioned to this to you when we talked on the phone the other day, a lot of the clients that are taking advantage of this are fairly, you know, they make a good, they make a good income. They're, they have six figure salaries. Um, they already have money saved aside. They've been saving up for a while. And this is just supplementing the money they already have. So, right. um, so don't, I wouldn't, I would advise clients not to think of, you know, maybe they're making $140,000 a year and they have, you know, a hundred thousand in the bank for down payment. They can still use this program um, for what it's worth. So the other thing is they can currently live in that town, but then they can move wherever. And I think that gets confusing for a lot of people because they think, Hey, I have to live in that town and I have to buy in that town. Right? Like, so I have to live in Quincy and I have to buy in Quincy. That's not the case. They can live in Quincy and buy in Needham or, you know, uh, they can live in Boston and buy, you know, wherever, um, you know, Fitchburg or, 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 you know, North Attleboro, whatever the case might be. And so, so we see, the, yeah. We, it's for the residents of the cities or towns. Correct. So yeah. I for the now, resident, and then they can move, move wherever they want to move. Wow. Yeah. And so we talked a little bit about that, right? Like, yep. like maybe a married couple that, you know, they, they, you know, they were, young and single living in Boston and you know, they, they're now starting a family and they want to move to the suburbs. This is a great program for them to think about um, in that case. So they do have to prove that they currently live there. Um, they have to provide, provide two forms of identification. So a utility bill, a credit card statement, uh, if their bank statements or their pay stubs already have their current address on there, that's all proof. So just two forms of identification showing they currently live at that address. Um, and then how the program works. So let's go through it real quick on a $400,000 purchase. 5% of the grant goes towards the down payment. So the first 5% is mm -hmm. going to go towards the down payment. That's in this example with 400, that's going to be $20,000. So yep. now if they're getting the $35,000 grant, they have 15,000 left over. What can they do with that? Unfortunately, it can't just all be lumped into the down payment because that'd be awesome if it did, but it does help in another way. So what we do is we take that remaining 15,000, we can pay all of the closing costs. So our, the lender's fee, the attorney fee, the appraisal, all that kind of stuff, as well as prepaid. So prepaids are usually in Massachusetts, we collect roughly five months worth of property taxes up front. 
So we're going to pay your first five months of property taxes for you using the grant funds. And usually you have to pay roughly about 15 months worth of home insurance, the first uh, the first full year of home insurance plus another three months. So we'll pay all your home insurance for you as well. So we're going to take that 15000 We're going to pay your prepaids for you. And then there's usually, that, that usually doesn't add up to 15000 quite honestly. That might be, you know, depending on the loan size, depending on the property taxes, that may be like eight or 9000 You have another 6000 left over, potentially. You can use that to buy down the interest rate. So get a lower rate than you would otherwise. And you might as well take advantage of much of the grant as you can. So get the lowest rate you possibly can. And then you can also use it um, to pay for what's called a single premium PMI policy. So PMI, Robert, as you know, stands for private mortgage insurance. Right. Most people think of that on a monthly basis. But this program allows you to uh, pay for a single premium up front and then never have to pay it again. So that's another thing that we can do with that money. Um, so that's, that's one thing. So that's how it works. And then another thing I've noticed, a lot of loan officers aren't doing this. And I highly recommend that if you are talking to somebody about the grant, talk to them also about combining it with down payment assistance. Mass housing is always, um, has always allowed down payment assistance. So they will do uh, most programs like the first time home buyer will grant you uh, $15,000 at a 2% interest rate. So it's a, that money, by the way, this down payment assistance does need to be paid back. It's not a grant, but it's, it's, it's good money. So 15,000 at 2% is fantastic if you can get it. So you might as well take advantage of it if you can. And then in certain towns and certain buyers, if they're in the low to moderate income uh, category, they might actually be able to take care of, uh, take advantage of what's something called workforce advantage, which will give them up to $50,000 at a 0% interest rate, zero, zero payment. So I recently had a client who got, I don't know, roughly $40,000 in grant funds and then another $40,000 in down payment assistance at a 0%. So they got $80,000 total uh, towards the wow. purchase of their new home. That's life changing, Michael, for a lot of people. It is life changing. It absolutely is. Yeah. Particularly, you know, people are struggling to like come, you know, they're, you know, they have a lot of bills or whatever. They're struggling to come up with this down payment that could really go a long way to help them. Um, That's great. So then anyway, what kind of properties can you buy? It's a standard, you know, single family condo, uh, two family, three to four unit property. These can all be used. The grant money can be used to buy any of those types of properties. Um uh, this is interesting. They don't have to be a citizen. It used to be wow. mass housing. You had to be a citizen or a green card holder. You can be here on an H-1B visa and still use this program. So that's okay. something to keep in mind uh, for anybody that's here looking to buy a home. Um, and then, and again, we talked about this. Don't overlook high net worth buyers. Um, you know, those are people that would potentially be benefit from the program just as much as somebody else that's on the low to moderate side. Um, and then the last, one of the last things I would talk about is interest rate. A lot of people think because it's mass housing, the rate's the same, no matter which lender they go through. There is a huge, for whatever reason, I don't know why per se, but there's a big difference in rate. I've seen as much as a one and a half percent difference in rates between lenders. So like anytime you're getting a mortgage, always get a second opinion. Our, our, our most recent rate on this program was six and a half percent paying a point using that grant to buy down a point. Um, which is pretty good considering the average 30 years now around 7%. So this is going to get you a, a discounted interest rate uh, compared to where the national average is. And then lastly, you know, this is, a, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Once this money's gone, it's gone. They're not, I don't see the Congress giving us any more funds for COVID or anything like that. So, uh, the you know, once that's done, it's not going to get renewed next year. So um, I would say, Try to take advantage of this as quickly as you possibly can before the funds do run out. They have about $65 million that they're lending out, um, and we don't know when that will go away. And that's real, honestly, Robert, that's really about it. I can stop sharing my screen and let yeah. you, give you back control. Excellent, Michael. No, that was great, man. You answered pretty much all of my questions, man. It was super thorough, and you went through it like automatic. So I can tell you you're in this, man. You've done quite a few of these loans to date, huh? Yeah, I might have done that that presentation more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, man. No, I guess one of the questions I have is, what does the application process look like, right? Like, do they come in and they apply for a standard loan and then you would kind of add some paperwork in or add an application specific to the grant? Yeah, most of the time people understand, hey, you know, the, the, you know somebody such as yourself, 
you know, you would say, hey, you live in Boston, you're a first time home buyer, you, you might want to talk to somebody about this grant program. And, and normally when they talk to us, we'll, we'll really quickly, again, it's pretty simple to decide whether or not they would qualify for the grant funds, because we'll see their income, we'll verify everything, and then we'll walk them through how much they would potentially get for the grant funds. Um, and it's, you know, it's part of the pre-approval process. So we'll, okay. we'll, we'll make sure that they qualify. Uh, there is a there is if they go on the mass housing website, they have a little questionnaire. It's about a four four questions that they would respond to, and it'll give them a little certificate saying yes, you you may qualify for the grant. So it ask them like, where do you currently live? Are you a first time home buyer? And roughly how much is your annual income? Um, they answer those those questions. It'll give them that certificate saying yeah, you're good. But really, they need to talk to a lender because the lender needs to walk through every little thing. I mean, they really need to take a deep dive on, um, on the pay stubs, for instance, like, so like if you get a bonus income, right, we got it. We got to average that bonus income and we can't just take your salary. So the way the qualifying income works, it's kind of a worst case scenario. Even if we're not using that bonus to help them qualify for the loan, we need to make sure that's not going to throw them over that income limit. And so that's where you have to be very, very careful on this program it's all about the income limit and then we have to match them to a mass housing program right so mass housing has about four different i mean it's four they have eight different mortgage programs so we have to match the the client with the mortgage the mass housing mortgage program um but then once we get them pre-approved we let them know what they can get for the grant and we give them that pre-approval letter and get them out there with you get them shopping for a new home excellent michael one other thing i wanted to touch on that you mentioned is the income limit and you touched on it again so you had said that it's up to 180,000, depending on what area they're in. Correct. And I just wanted you to confirm what, what kind of income range are you seeing for people who apply? Um, Cause I think it's important people understand this, this is not a low income product. You know, $180,000 for one household member, it doesn't have to be the household, it's whoever's right. on the application um, is, is a significant uh, income level where I think a lot more people qualify for this than they know. So are you seeing folks you know, from the $40,000 to 180 range and kind of anything between applying for this? Anywhere. I have a client right now who is a, um, she's actively looking. She had a couple houses, but she, she ended up backing out on the houses. But she is a uh, nail technician. She makes $65,000 a year on a salary. But somehow between her and some family members have roughly 230000 to put down on the home plus the grant. <laughs> okay. Wow. She's, yep. getting a, she's getting a home for, you know, she's not put her loan's going to be pretty low. So she's looking in that five, six hundred thousand dollar price point um, because she has so much money to put down, even though her income's a little bit on the, you know, uh, not on the high side necessarily. Um, so she that's on that's kind of on the low side in terms of income. I had another gentleman. I just locked him in uh, last week. He makes about one hundred and twenty plus bonus. He's probably about one thirty five. He's buying a nice little condo over in Needham. Um, he, again, he already had about 120 to put down. So we got him the 120, plus we're getting him between the grant and the down payment assistance about another, uh, what is that, about another $50,000 on top of that to help him with, uh, with the purchase of his new home. So yeah, it sort of runs the gamut, I guess, if you will, um, on income. Yep, and then again, the rate, right? Like you can only use a portion of this for the down payment, but the rest can go towards closing costs, prepaid, and buying the rate down, especially in this climate uh, where rates are rising. And yes. have you seen that the, the, the rising rates have an impact on the market? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so it's having an impact on what you can afford, right? So when when the rates were, you know, three percent, you could buy a lot more house than when the rates are in the sixes or even sevens, right? So, so it's definitely hurting uh, that first time home buyer. The good news here's the good news for the first time home buyer, in my opinion. This is a great market for them because six months ago, a year ago, if you were a 5% down or a low down payment, first time home buyer, and you were going into a multiple bid situation, unless everybody else was also a 5% down first time home buyer, you were, even if you had maybe the highest bid on the house, you may, they may not have accepted your offer, right? They were looking for a bigger down payment uh, to try to ease their concerns about appraisal. So this is a good environment, I think, for the first time home buyer, even though the rates are a bit higher, is to work with their lender and try to figure out exactly where they can buy. Um, and, and again, use that those points to buy down the interest rate. Get, that will help in terms of their buying power. 
um, I think it's a great time for first time home buyers. I really do. totally agree. We're seeing it on our end as well. I mean, I think the buyers who are looking now, it's totally different. There, there's no longer those bidding wars and the lines out the door for the open houses on the weekend. Right. The market's still moving. People are still buying homes, but buyers, the ball's in their court now. They have a lot more leverage than they've had over the last five to six years. And we haven't seen this in a while. So the shift has occurred. And uh, like you said, I don't think it's a bad thing for first time home buyers. And I always tell our buyers, Michael, to make sure you're still out there making offers based on what you can afford. And you t touched on that. That's yeah, really I would agree. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great time for them. Fantastic, man. Well, I, I definitely wanted to thank you for sharing about the Mass Dreams Grant Program. Um, how can people get in touch with you, Michael, if they're interested in getting one of these loans? Obviously, if you're thinking about buying, you can contact me. But uh, how, how are some ways folks can connect with you, whether it's via phone, email, social media? That's why, yeah, best way is either phone, you know, phone or text or email. So and I think you have my information. So um, it was in that that that, that presentation. So, yeah, I, and I'm happy. Obviously, you know, we're doing this on a Saturday. So I do yeah. work weekends. I do work nights. We're in real estate. It. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop. So, uh, um, you know, it is what it is. No days off for us, man. No days off. That's right. <laughs> Anything else you want to share before we wrap up? That's it, Robert. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. I really do. No problem. Likewise, Michael. Thank you for taking the time to meet me this Saturday. And uh, no, I really appreciate working with you. And for those of you that don't know, Michael's a great loan originator, senior loan advisor over at Leader Bank. And, uh, you know, he and I have done some deals together over the years. And I'm really excited to uh, do some of these mass dream grants with you, not loans, grants. grants. And, uh, I think it's yeah. going to be uh, an amazing year for us going into 2023. As long as those funds are still there. You got it. Okay. Get it while you can, guys. That's it. Excellent. All right. All right, Michael. Thank Have you, a great Robert. day, man. All right. You too.